So I want to bring our audio producer, Mike, in here because uh, I've been compiling Volvo jokes, Mike, and I'm so sorry. All right. But today's episode is about giving Volvo its due. Yeah. And so I've rounded up what I would call the best Volvo jokes, but I have a sneaking feeling you're going to think less of me after this. No, I did hear your rules of the road, so I know what we're anticipating coming into this, and I expect nothing but the top tier of Volvo jokes, right? Oh. Right? Okay, well... I didn't write any of these. I want everybody listening to know that you got to blame this on the ether of the internet if you don't like them. Mm -hmm. If you like them, Mm -hmm. give me all the credit. Heap it on. (laughs) Uh, Let's go ahead and start with this one. Women say Volvo drivers are very good with their hands. Mike, do you know why? Hmm. Good with their hands. Tell me why. Uh, It's because most people think of how many times they've popped the hood. You know, (laughs) they're they're reaching down there and... (laughs) Right out of the gate, uh, it feels like we're we're watching a uh, late night talk show stand up monologue. So I'm okay. very I'm very excited for this pitch and deliver mode that you have going right now. This is great. What's the uh, what's the fastest way to make a Volvo uh, go down the hill? Using the acceleration. Uh, actually, you'll want to turn the engine off. But it. Yeah, let gravity take it over. I was disappointed in that one from the word go. I'm really not proud of this one, oh. even though it's going to make me laugh, okay? Okay, let's go for it. Come on. Let's... This one isn't like a Q&A joke. It's just a line. Volvo, more blind spots than a Braille convention. <laughs> He's laughing. You just can't hear him. <laughs> a Braille convention? How many have yeah. have you been to? A Braille convention? A yeah. None. I, I don't know it. I haven't learned to speak it, to feel it. Do you speak Braille or do you feel it? You feel Braille. Okay. In your heart. Yeah. <laughs> If you can my heart braille. is cold and black, Mike. I don't think I could ever feel Braille in my heart, to be honest with you. I don't have the capability. Uh, what does a Volvo and your garbage have in common? Um, neither have the capacity to hold all the junk I want to put in them. It's a, it's a good guess, but no, actually, they both get picked up by the same guy. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <That's> yeah. A- <laughs> Sad, right? I feel like you need Max Weinberg in the background and be like, ta ta ah, yeah. <laughs> I, look, if you could give me that just to walk around with every day so I feel like so many of my jokes don't hit <laughs> flat on their face, I, I would love that. Uh, this last one I have to credit our old pal Caleb for because okay. he DM'd me this one. Um, and I can't believe that this is the one that Caleb sent just knowing Caleb, but here it is. You're talking about the, the friendliest young man that we're probably going to vote into political office no matter what at one point in time in the future, right? Right. And he, right. Sent, he sent you this? Yeah, he sent me, okay. uh, what's the difference between a Volvo and a tampon? Gemini Christmas. It's, uh, it's pulling something out. It's, 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 it, we're, we're talking. You're at, on the right track. Are we talking at something? I don't. Uh, a tampon comes with its own tow rope, Mike. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. Uh, and look what I found. A tampon? No, it was a rim shot, but it, <laughs> oh. yeah, it, it's actually going to be followed up with these crickets. Let's hit the logo. Stellar. From Omaha, Nebraska, to whatever lane you're driving, this is the H&M Trucking Podcast with your host, Marcus Bridges. What's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to the H&M Trucking Podcast, episode two. And we are talking about giving Volvo its due. That's right. The H&M fleet is made up entirely of Volvo trucks. We call it the Rainbow Fleet because they're all just a huge bunch of different pretty colors. Uh, And we will talk to an H&M driver, Mr. John Mayhew, coming up a little bit later. He's going to talk to you about why he decided that he liked Volvos when he used to be one of these Volvo haters. Uh, So stay tuned for that coming up later on in the episode. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe, and uh, tell your friends about the podcast. It's what keeps the lights on here. We're going to say it a lot. You can link up with us at the H&M Trucking social media page. That's where we're going to post every episode. That's where we're going to share some videos. Uh, We're on YouTube as well. You're going to see some videos up there on H&M Trucking's YouTube page. So you can uh, find us there, subscribe it, like it. Like I said, interact with it. If there's something you want to hear, Shout out to us. Uh, Throw a comment on one of the posts. We will see it. It's all I do all day is just sit there and hope for you guys to to reach out to me. So H&M Trucking Socials is where you're going to find us. And also uh, your dispatchers out there, H&M drivers, will be sending you a weekly email 
that we'll have a little bit of a uh, synopsis of the podcast, what's coming up and everything. So look forward to that as well. And uh, key down on some mud ducks and share it over the speakers, man. If you got a CB, do you know how proud it would make me to hear my name or this podcast name mentioned over the CB radio to where it's just broadcast to whoever's in range? That is is like a dream come true. That and keeping the lights on. So still do the like, share, and subscribe thing. All right. Uh, first segment here, I found a post asking basically the community of a Facebook page that we frequent called Rubber Side Down. Uh, you've heard us talk about it before. Someone asked the question, what's the worst make and model of truck that you've ever driven? Over 300 comments, like 350 comments on this thing. So obviously there's a lot of variety here, but the reason that this piqued my interest is because I saw that there was quite a bit of hate for Volvos and I didn't really get it because why would this uh, trucking company that's uh, what what we would call prestigious, uh, well run, seems like all the drivers are happy, seems like the front office is happy. Well, nobody's happy if you're out there driving shitbox trucks, right? So I didn't believe that all this hate was actually founded. And I wanted to go through and read some of these comments because I'm on to something here and, and uh, I'll go through some of them and I'll kind of fill you in along the way. Uh, Roaming Farmer says to the question, once again, what's the worst make um, and model of truck you've ever driven? Roaming Farmer just says Volvo. Craig Roberts just says Volvo. See a pattern developing here. A guy named Mike, not our audio ninja, just said Volvo. It took me till the fourth or fifth Volvo comment where I finally got a little bit of insight as to why people don't like Volvos. Now, Lonnie says uh, a Volvo, but only because it had the fold out table and couch thing on the bottom and my fat butt had to climb up to the top bunk. So after like two days of that, I just gave up and slept on the couch. And it stands to reason that that would be a thing that made you not like it. I don't think Volvo gives a flying fart about it um, just because I mean, it, look, it doesn't fit you. That doesn't mean it doesn't fit everybody. And I'm, I'm not, look, if you want to be fat, like everybody gets to do their own thing. Live off Twinkies for all I care. But it's probably not the truck's fault that the bunk didn't really fit you. Let's just put it that way. Um, we'll get down into some more of these comments here. Joshua Thompson says his T600 was the worst thing he's ever driven. He says, I don't care what anyone has to say. They will always have the largest spot of hatred in my heart. Uh, Norman says a newer 16 Pete 389. That's a Peterbilt. And a 389 is one of those ones that you hear quite a bit of good things about. There's a lot of fans of the 389 out there. Um, he says the thought of the computerized electronic crap that's everywhere giving out makes me worry while I'm working. I'm quitting. No fun, no mo. And uh, that's that's sad. Obviously, it doesn't work for H&M. So, hey, if you're uh, down to step on into a Volvo... Send us an application. We'll talk to you about it. Uh, Jeff, he says a shitliner Crapscadia, which I believe is is a <laughs> slang for a Freightliner Cascadia. He says, never again, I'll hang them up for good before I ever drive one again. That's a bold statement. I mean, look, this is how truck drivers make their living behind the wheels of trucks. And if there's one of them that you hate bad enough to where you would change your career, um, Hey, man, more power to you. I'm sorry. That sucks. I'd like to know a little bit more. Um, if if anybody wanted to tell me or Jeff, you want to reach out. Chris says, and this is kind of funny. I once had to stand beside a Volvo. I know it's not driving, but it's pretty close to just as embarrassing. So now you can see what I'm saying out there. There's some people that won't even stand next to a Volvo, let alone get behind the wheel of one. Clifton uh, chimes in here on the uh, post and he says, well, I can't remember the model name, but I met her in Gary, Indiana. I remember that much. <laughs> worst, I asked for the worst thing you've ever driven. Um, it, look, it makes sense. I, I, I'll i tell you, I feel like Gary, Indiana gets a bad rap, but until I hear less true crime podcasts that take place in Gary, Indiana, I, I can't really, I can't vouch for it at this point. I've never been, probably not going to go. Sean says a Kenworth T680 uh, the truck itself wasn't bad, but it had an automatic transmission that was either all or nothing. So every time I had to hook up to a trailer, it felt like I was going to break the kingpin off. See, that is a very, I feel like a very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Precise gripe. Like, I don't like my wife's car because every time I touch the brakes, I feel like I slam my face off the steering wheel. It's a light car. It has really good brakes. 
and I don't know how she maneuvers it. I'm, I'm a drummer. I'm used to kick pedals. I want to hit things hard, and I have a full-size pickup. It takes a little bit of, you know, beef to stop that thing. But I've got a forehead print on the goddamn dash from my beautiful wife every time I'm driving her vehicle because it, it's just so jerky on the brakes. So I get you, um, Sean. I, I really do. Uh, Love Handle, which by far my favorite name in this in this segment. Uh, he says an international... Uh, those into the disposable Cascadias. Tim chimes in and says anything that says international on it is the worst thing I've ever driven. Um, and we get back to Volvo here with Robert. I drove a Volvo for two weeks. It was brand new and it was an absolute piece of crap. Robert says, I drove one too. Every freaking new one had transmission issues. So we're getting a little bit deeper here. Um, a Mercedes powered Freightliner by Columbia. That one didn't score too well. I see a lot of intertrational, intertrational, intertrational. Nobody likes those things. Bobby said, Volvo has the best ride, but small penis people need to knock it to boost their low small penis self esteem. The worst kind of self esteem is small penis self esteem. I, I, I know a guy that told me that once. Uh, Alan King says, did I knock it? No, I simply said it was the worst truck I've driven. If you don't want a fucking honest answer, don't ask a fucking honest question. And this is why we only hang out at Facebook for just a few minutes. It's, it's little dabs. It's like hot sauce. If you just cover the whole thing, you've ruined the plate. Facebook is mostly ruined. Um, I thought that was going to be as bad as it got, but then somebody replied to that comment and said, Volvos are for foreigners. So now we've actually come to the end of my rope. I decided to stop looking after this. That's all you're going to get from Facebook. But what I found is, listen, I would say if I took a random sampling of 10 of these comments, four of them are saying Volvo, and I wanted to know why. It really is important to me. These, it, there's not unhappy drivers. I've spoken to a lot of people that work for H&M, and nobody is banging their head off the wall hoping that they get a new Volvo or, or a new uh, Freightliner to replace a Volvo or a Mac or anything like that. They like these trucks. I want to know why, which is why I'm bringing on John Mayhew to talk to us about his Volvo right now. Joining us today on the H&M Trucking Podcast is driver John Mayhew. John, thank you so much for being here today. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Well, we're super happy that you've uh, shared some of your time with us today. Where are you at right now? Uh, right now, I'm in uh, Indiana, heading to Remington. Okay, and you've you've got a load on, I assume. You're talking to us while you're on the job. Uh, correct. I have a, a driver headset, so don't worry, hands free. Hey, awesome. Eve's gonna love to hear that. She's she's big on the safety, <laughs> and I know that uh, some of your some of your safety specialists back there will be happy to hear that too. How long have you been driving, John? Uh, well, with H&M, a couple of months now, driving an 18-wheeler period, a little over two years. Okay, and was uh, was truck driving something that you'd always wanted to do, or was that something that you got into by chance? Like, how did you how did you come to start your career as a truck driver? Well, I've always, you know, as all ideal male kids, always like, you know, the big, tough truck drivers, and, you know, just that's why they get so happy when they ask you to blow your horn, and they do, and they put it on their faces. So I've always, you know, felt like I wanted to drive one, but for the longest time, I was always, you know, making up some sort of excuse. You know, I'm I'm steady where I am right now, or, you know, there's always something that, you know, kept me from doing it. And, uh, well, a lot of people don't really know, but I have a, a late fiancé. She was actually, I lost her due to a drunk truck driver, and she had always told me, chase your dreams no matter what. And for the longest time, after I lost her, you know, I just, I went homeless and just gave up on life. And finally, for her memory, for lack of better words, I pulled my head out of my butt. <laughs> tried to get back into the working world, tried to actually be a good civilian, basically. But I was always lost, didn't know where to start. So I figured, you know, it'll come when it comes. Worked at Walmart for three years and then transferred to Tennessee where I was trying to reconnect with my bio family. Well, when I was at Walmart in Tennessee, I met the girl that is now my future wife. We're going to be getting married here in about a month or so. Oh, congratulations. And thank you. Just like my uh, late one, this one was just like, follow your dreams. I don't care what it takes. I kind of blew it off. While I was working at Walmart, 
I got into a head-on collision with a uh, somebody going down the wrong side of the road. I don't know if they were doing drugs or what, but lost my favorite little pickup. Oh, and heartbreaker. I got a, a payout from insurance, so I got myself a rental vehicle. And because of the accident and not being able to work, I lost my job with Walmart. So currently living with, you know, my at the time girlfriend, don't have a vehicle, don't have a job. She looks at me and says, you got no excuse, nothing holding you back. So I started looking at uh, trucker companies that offer schooling because I just used my payout to get myself a little 97 Dodge Dakota Sport stick shift. And I ended up finding a company called Titan Transfer. They put you through schooling. You don't start paying back until you start driving. Oh, that's nice. And Keep from strapping you from cash even worse than you already are when you started. Yeah. At that point, they were in Shelbyville, Tennessee, and I'm living in, in a little bitty town called Camden, three and a half hours away. So every day, you know, I'm taking off from home, going to school, coming back home. I start doing bad in class. One of the company uh, people, I uh, ended up calling her a man of the tight the financial lady because she handled all finances, but she also, anytime you call the company and ask a question, they're just like, I don't know. That's an Amanda question. Ah, she's one of those where it's like, <laughs> you got to go talk to the wizard. If you want to know that I, I totally understand that we have one of those at this company too. Yeah. And, uh, she ended up coming to me one day. She was just like, you were doing so good. And now you're just doing so bad. What gives? And you know, I, I told her, I'm just like, well, I'm spending three and a half hours a day one way driving to make it here. And she looked at me like I just told her that she had two heads. And she was just like, why didn't you tell us sooner? I'm just like, because y'all are paying for the school and what else are y'all going to do for me? You know, I can't, I want to do this, but I'm struggling right now and I'm about ready to quit. And she was like, don't you quit. You were doing so darn well. Tell you what, we will pay for a hotel here in Shelbyville, and they did. Well, that's awesome. That helped a lot, I bet, not having yeah. to spend those extra seven hours a day behind the wheel. It helped out a lot, and there were a few times when I was going home that I started to go off-road because I was just so dang tired. Yep. But, you know, that helped out a lot. So next thing you know, you know, I'm, I'm passing my test and almost didn't pass because, funny enough, you know, I was floating through the gears during my test and my uh, tester looks over at me and is just like you're not supposed to do that but since you seem so comfortable do it doing that i won't tell you right now however if you miss a single gear up shifting or down shifting i'm immediately failing you because i technically should be doing so right now i was like oh crap <laughs> you know I, I was forgetting a double clutch i was trying to be one of those cool truck drivers that only use the clutch to stop and because, you know, the, one of my uh, teachers, well, he told me, he was just like, you drive a stick shift truck, yeah? I was like, yeah, it's a five-speed. He was just like, all right, well, same principle, but here's the thing I want you to do when you're going home or whenever you're driving. I want you to push the clutch in, put it in neutral, push the clutch in, go to your next gear. Because that's what you'll have to do when you're driving this 13-speed Volvo that we have as a tester. And so I did that, but, you know, I got kind of cocky and totally forgot that during my test, spaced it out. And I did like he was doing when he was driving us around during the first couple of weeks, and I would just, no, no clutch, I'd float the gears. <laughs> and is that considered like a like a bad thing to do? Because, I, I mean, the only thing I know about double clutching, and this might date me a little bit here, is... is that, you know, Dom Torero and Fast and the Furious, when he looks at Paul Walker and he's like, you're not double clutching like you should. <laughs> that thing was never something I had to do in the focus. Can you tell me a little bit why you have to double clutch in a big rig? What's the difference there? Uh, I may be wrong. People may, may know more than me because I didn't really understand it when they told me. But from what I understand is a lot of people will try to single clutch like you do in a little car. Now, for something that takes high torque, like race cars, like Fast and Furious, which I don't know how many gears their transmission has because every five minutes 
shifting. And right, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, a very good point. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people make fun of that. But anyway, back to your yeah, question. Well, it's a lot like bullets in a gun in a Die Hard movie, right? It's like, <laughs> yeah. how many bullets do you have in that gun? You it's fired like you, 200 so far. you got a six-chamber little <laughs> rotating pistol. You, you <laughs> fired 200. When the hell did you reload? Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> off camera. That's all that matters. At the same time, they downshifted in Fast and the Furious. It was off camera. You see, it would make more sense, just going on a little uh, side road here, it would make more sense if they would do what I like to call whenever I'm in my own personal car, back when I still had a stick shift. I'm a family man now, so I had to get rid of my truck. Okay. We got a little uh, 2017 Equinox automatic. Ah, oh, man. From what I understand is high torque. If you push the clutch in and you try to go into a gear, I don't think it has enough time to slow down if you're doing a single. You can do it, because I did do it, back when I was in school, and I got yelled at. <laughs> yeah, right, you did do it, but it almost failed you a test, so you're obviously not supposed to, and that's probably just them being worried about that maintenance cost, right? During the test, I uh, floated the gears. Now, during school, just to see, you know, why can't you, you know, like in a little car that's not a sports car, you know, you, uh, you push the clutch in, you put it in gear, you start letting off the clutch as you start getting on the throttle. Well, I tried doing that in the 13-speed Volvo. It didn't want to go in, and it made a grinding noise. <laughs> that wasn't good. Same thing can be said for, you know, floating the gears, or that's what it's called when you don't use the clutch at all. Uh-huh. Because uh, in a semi, if you can get, or regular cars, too, I just advise you not to do it because they're so finicky, especially in little cars. But in a semi, if your RPMs are good, pulling on the stick or pushing on it, depending on what gear you're trying to get it go into. To float them, you have to be in that perfect RPM zone, which for every truck it can be different. Mm -hmm. But if you're in that perfect zone and you already have pressure on the stick and you let off the throttle, it'll bump in the neutral and then bump right into the gear. If you're not perfect and you let off the throttle you bump it in the neutral, it'll grind like crazy until you either <laughs> slow it down or give it more throttle. It's all about what I call, and I may not know the correct term, rev matching. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've heard it called that before. Okay. Absolutely. And I, I also heard it called uh, what somebody called it power shifting once when I was younger, where they were, and it was... It was funny riding with them because they would get it every now and then, kind of like you're talking about where they'd hit that sweet spot and they just wouldn't need any clutch. They'd pull right from gear to gear. And then other times, yeah, we got that illustrious ground uh, grinding noise that you hear, yeah. um, it, which it's weird how it sounds so much similar to money spilling out of your pocket uh, because I feel like that's what you're getting close to every time you hear that grinding, right? Yeah. Well, there is a thing called a money shift. And that's in, like, drag racing, which I did used to participate in. And I did do a money shift. Pretty much, if you're, you know, you're taking off and you're, you know, you're launching because you're trying to beat the guy in the aisle next to you. Well, if you're going from first gear to second gear, you think you're going into third, but you hit first at high RPMs, you're basically oh. trying, it's called the money shift because you will drop all of the internals <laughs> of your transmission will just puke on the ground. And now you got to spend <laughs> so much money replacing that damn transmission just because you didn't actually hit third, you hit first. Yeah. <laughs> Hence, you know, a money shift. Yeah, exactly. A money shift. And it's not a positively connotated word when you say money shift. It's negative because yeah. you're going to be spending a lot. Uh, that's, that's great, man. Well, Hey, I, we are talking about destroying the Volvo stigma here today on, uh, the H and M trucking podcast. And oh, you mentioned that you were <laughs> training, uh, you went to school in a Volvo, uh, and, and I know because Eve told me that you weren't generally happy about, uh, driving a Volvo when you first came to H and M talk to me a little bit about why you didn't want to drive one. Was it that experience in school or had you talked to other truck drivers that just didn't like them? What was it? Uh, it was my personal experience. The only thing I liked about that Volvo was that it was a stick shift. Other than that, when you looked in the back, it was a sleeper, but when you looked in the back, it looked so 
tiny. I was just like, okay, barely any room for a mini fridge. So if I drive a Volvo, I'm going to suffer for food. You know, the bed looks cramped. Like when I, just for gets and shiggles, uh, pardon the, uh, Oh, you're fine. We 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 are a podcast for truckers, John. You say whatever words come <laughs> to your heart, okay? <laughs> All righty. So just for gets and shiggles, for one day while we're going down the road, I looked at uh, James. I was like, hey, I'm going to lay down because this thing doesn't look big enough. I laid down on the bunk bed, on the bottom bunk. My head was touching one side. My feet were touching the other side, and my knees were bent. Oh, wow. I cannot sleep comfortably like that. So from then on, and some of the other drivers I'd talked to through that company were all like, yeah, Volvo is like the minivans of the semis. They're all smaller than everything else. You're going to want it Peterbilt if you want, you know, fancy, if you want, you know, room to kick up your feet and have somebody sit on the foot of the bed with you. So you're going to want a Kenworth for comfort. You're not going to want a Volvo because look at our training truck. You know, it's small interior, big exterior, what the hell did they do? Put a lot of insulation in it. <laughs> so, you know, I I didn't like Volvo. With my trainer, we rode around in a uh, brand new Peterbilt, and it was comfortable as hell. It was basically like the Cadillacs of the semis. And then once I got done with my trainer, I would jump into a Kenworth, and it was maybe a small step below no, the the PD, or as I like to call it, the Peter Wagon. Okay. <laughs> and then when I changed companies from Titan, because I moved to Nebraska, I went to Werner. Yes, I know you. You made a mistake. <laughs> what were you thinking? Hey, man, I wasn't gonna say it. I was I was gonna let you say it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just saying right now. If you're thinking about going to Werner, please don't. You will thank me later. And if you go to Werner, yeah. you will be like, oh, God, that John dude was right. <laughs> well, good news is they won't have me, John. So none of the none of these <laughs> companies will. But uh, I will take that advice and heed it, okay? Well, I will just say this before I run off on a tangent for too long. Their recruitment lies out the rear end to you. They tell you you're going to get this many miles, you're going to get this much pay, you're going to get this much home time. None of it was right. That seems like a kind of a bad way to hire drivers that stick around for a while. Yeah, and when I told them I was leaving, they did try to guilt trip me, you know, think of what's best for your family. And, you know, being home one day a week, if I was lucky, that ain't good for my family. I have a, I currently have an eight-month-old son. He's not going to grow up without a daddy. So that was a no-go for me. And one thing I used to always tell people is, mess with my money? Okay. Mess with my home time? No. Not okay. Absolutely not. Yeah. It sounds like you've got your priorities in order there, John. Yeah. So, Werner, they had me in an international. Can't say I liked it too much. Only thing I liked about it was when they gave it to me, it had 500 miles on it. Oh, brand new international. That's, I only say that. I have no, I have no I, like, personal I attachment agree. or detachment. I agree. With I, that I hear them called that Inter- a lot. International. So. Okay. I agree with that. All right. So it has no get up and go whatsoever. Like you'll have your foot on the floor trying to do, well, they have the, their trucks limited at 65 mile an hour. It takes you almost a year and a half to get up to that 65 with an empty trailer. Wow. Gutless. Going up a mountain. Eh, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so after you left Werner, is that when you came to H&M? Yeah, when I left uh, Werner, I was with them for a, a month. And while I was with them, I am kind of sad to say this, but I was still working with them in their truck when I contacted H&M. Oh, uh, your secret's safe here. It's just a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I was immediately, I was kind of rude with H&M recruitment. So if they are listening, I do want to apologize but I was not about to be lied to again. I had told them, if you don't know your shit, don't waste your time, hang up on me right now. And, you know, they're like... And they they didn't? They did not. (laughs) They they actually quoted me less than what I'm making right now. But when they said that we will have you home at least two days a week, they were not lying. I get home on Friday, and I don't take off again until Monday. 
So I get the weekend with my soon to be wife and my little man. That's awesome. And you know, when did your mind finally change about Volvos? Was it once you were once you jumped into the H and M Volvo for the first time? Well, you see, when I got assigned my truck and I looked at the key and it says Volvo on it, I was thinking, oh boy. But as soon as I stepped into this thing, uh, which I don't know if I said it or not, but mine's a 2019. Okay. Uh, I just stepped into it and I was just like, I don't remember them being this small. Am I, are you sure this isn't a Kenworth? <laughs> you know, I was just like, oh, I'll give it a little bit. And, you know, my truck has high mileage on it, so I'll be getting a new truck then. If that comes to the time, I'll ask for a new truck. My truck right now, looking down at the odometer, is 521,494 miles on it. Wow. Half a mil. Oh, so, yeah. She's uh, getting a little tired. What color truck are you driving real quick before I before I forget and leave that one behind? Because we are talking about the Rainbow Fleet here, so we have to draw attention oh, yeah. to the color on the exterior. I love that, the Rainbow Fleet, yeah. Uh, mine right now is white. I love it because it's a white truck with a white trailer, so it looks pretty uniform. I love that. Uh, But I have seen some other trucks out there that I kind of would like to have. Like, if I could, if I could choose my color of truck when I get my new one, I would want a deep blue one. Now, that's just because that's my favorite color. Other than that, if I were to go home with a purple truck, my soon-to-be wife would be really happy because that's her favorite color. Okay. Well, think about it, man. You never know. You know, sometimes these sacrifices are made for the right reasons, and it seems like you're onto something with that purple truck. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. It would make her day if I were to pull up with a brand-new purple truck. So tell me about your dinette in, in the Volvo that you have now. I understand that's one of the features that you're uh, kind of stoked on. Oh, yes. Yes, the dinette. I absolutely love it. I've always wanted to own a camper now this thing it gives me the camper minus the restroom vibe that's because as you said you know it, ha- it has a dinette the bottom bunk you know it can turn into a couple of couches on either side of the table i love that because i don't have to struggle eating my food i have a little table it has built-in cup holders and whenever i want to sit there and watch my movies on my little flat screen TV that I have here is comfortable. I'm not having to try to get comfortable laying down and all this other crap. It's nice and comfy. That's great. So has Volvo become your favorite at this point, or do you still uh, kind of pine for another make and model out there? Uh, well, right now, due to the power, I'm kind of liking the Volvo. Okay. And I haven't seen any other uh, or heard of any other models of semis that have this uh, bunk feature okay so uh, i mean that's that's a selling point so it's got a bunch of features that you like um tell me this let's say i'm a volvo hater i'm one of those guys and i know there's a lot of them out there because we read through some comments on a facebook post earlier in the show that would make you think that nobody likes to drive volvo with as much trash as they were talking in there what would you tell a giant volvo hater now that you're kind of you, you weren't a hater but you're converted now you're you're a fan how would you convince me to become a fan? Do I just need the keys, take it for a spin, or are, are there some things that you could actually talk me into liking about Volvos? I mean, if you don't like Volvos, I'd tell you to take one for a spin for about a week and then come back to me. Because it took me about a week to realize that it wasn't as, like, the interior looks small and the exterior looks small. Do you, uh, do you watch Doctor Who at all? I don't, but I, I'm familiar with the uh, with the phone booth thing. I can't remember what it's called. Help me out. Yep, the TARDIS. TARDIS, there you go. TARDIS, for those of that don't know what it is, um, it's a sci-fi show, so it's science fiction, it ain't real. But the main character is a time lord, which is a species, and he has a thing called the TARDIS, which on the outside is a police box. So, you know, think of something a little bit about the size of a porta potty Mm-hmm. But the inside is an entire spaceship. It's a time machine. That's kind of what I think of Volvo is, because, you know, semis are big in general. But if you look at a Volvo versus the other ones, the hood looks small. looks like it has no power. The rest of the truck looks smaller. So you would think, eh, it looks small. It, it is small. No, I have uh, on my bottom bunk. Just like the Peterbilt, 
I have room for my feet to kick around if I want to. In the uh, dinette format, I can be sitting on one side, and I can't even touch the other side with my feet because I barely reach the cushions. That's great. So plenty of room to stretch out back there, even though that one you had in training felt really small. It was, that one you've got now is actually really spacious and comfortable. That's that's really good to hear. And thinking about it, I think it might be a a year difference thing. So you think it's a you think it's something that is uh, year by year. Maybe they make some adjustments, or maybe they were just listening to what everybody's complaint was for the earlier models, and in 2019 they were just like, "Listen, let's give us some space here." I mean, it sounds like they they kind of took that to heart. Yeah, that's that's kind of what my thought process was. Is either you know someone started driving for Volvo and they were like, "Oh crap, we make our stuff tiny," or maybe enough people came to them and was just like, "Hey, I like your truck, but it's small." Do something about it, or else we're not buying them anymore. Ah, the almighty dollar. Funny thing is, when I was working for uh, Titan, a lot of my loads were Volvo parts to Volvo plants to make Volvo trucks. While I was in a Kenworth. <laughs> now, how funny is that, Titan? If I wasn't supposed to say that, That's and you're on here, ironic I'm sorry. to say the least. Don't, don't sue me. Nah, you're fine, man. And trust me, they'll sue me long before they sue you. So I think you're good to go. You've got uh, what we call plausible deniability here. <laughs> I'm going to hit you with a few kind of rapid fire questions. And and again, thank you for, for bringing us all the info on Volvo, because I, I asked Eve specifically, give me somebody to talk to that started out not liking Volvo. And you've <laughs> given us like this point by point kind of experience that changed your mind and and i think it's interesting and i also think it's important because you're you know truck drivers out there you guys might not always be driving for a company that has the same model as what you're going for and if you're not an owner operator you're you might not get to choose you might just get assigned something so it's probably a good thing that we highlight the good features of these vehicles uh, all across the board you know peterbilt kenworth whatever because it, it seems to me, based on my research, that there's not really like a consensus for which one is the best. There's just a few of them that people like to hate on as the worst, and everything else is kind of personal preference. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Some questions that I like to ask, uh, I asked a lot of drivers when we were doing Unplugged OTR, uh, and I'm going to continue to, to field these questions to drivers now that we're doing the H&M Trucking Podcast but uh, just a few rapid fire. Uh, what's your favorite state to drive in and your least favorite state to drive in? Oh, least favorite would definitely be New Jersey, New York. And is that because of the traffic? Uh, yeah. Try having your blinker on for 15 miles and you miss your turn because the four-wheelers won't get out of your way. Oh, I, I'm, I'm going bald, but I would be 100% bald because I would pull every single hair out of the top of my head. I, I feel like when you turn on a blinker, that's the polite way of telling people I'm fucking coming over so like you can get out of the way. And, but I mean, when you're talking about, you know, bumper to bumper traffic in New Jersey, you're not getting over, especially not when you're yeah. as long as, as what a truck is. Yeah. Okay. So what about your favorite state to drive in? Is that, is that maybe just Nebraska you, because it's home? Uh, actually, no, believe it or not. I like the stretch of road. I can't remember right now between uh tennessee and georgia and since i'm midwest okay. regional i don't get to do that anymore it was kind of fun taking uh a whole bunch of uh alcohol that had your truck trailer and cargo weighing you in at eighty thousand pounds down a uh seven degree grade mountain <laughs> and, and so you call that fun so you do like speed you know you mentioned that you've raced a little bit before speed doesn't scare you at all does it john i don't not until my wheels start coming off the ground but no that's uh, <laughs> the speed the control well my kenworth was a little bit broken the exhaust was so i wasn't supposed to have a loud jake brake but uh at that point i was probably the loudest truck on that road and there's a little bit of a point of pride in that, isn't there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can hear it in your voice, man. <laughs> All right, so uh, so next question. Uh, what was your most challenging or frustrating load that you've hauled? Any circumstance. I mean, really, any circumstance. I'll, I'll take whatever you've got. Okay, well, I had a load of 38,000 pounds of fertilizer 
that I was taken to South Dakota with H&M. The roads were snowy, and it was hard for me to stop. I started driving in Tennessee, so the snow crap was kind of new to me. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was fun. But when I got to the customer, whoever had the trailer before me uh, didn't load it down right, and an entire pallet got busted. Oh, no, a fertilizer, and that's... The customer yelled at me, the inside of my trailer stunk to high heaven, and I'm just like, I didn't have the trailer the entire time, and I know that I drove good. The only way that that can happen is if you got someone slamming their brakes trying to lock them up. Yeah, there has been times that I've had to do that. Most of the time I'm when that happens, I'm empty. But whenever I'm heavy load and I know, you know, if I lock up my brakes right now, I'm going to slide another football field ahead. Right. I like to give myself that much clearance because one of the things my trainer beat into me is always, always have an out. If a little car is going to swerve in front of you, you need you need to do something because otherwise, that car that's in front of you, why did they swerve? Who knows? They could have blown a tire. They could have been swerving to avoid someone else that was going to wreck them. You're behind the wheel. You're in. You're the captain of this ship. You're in control of what is going to happen to it. Shit happens. Yes. However, if you anticipate the possibly happening like I like to do you can avoid a lot of things that could go bad like you know just when I was on the phone with you uh, when we first started little idiot four-wheeler decided to cut across three lanes of traffic because they're about to miss their uh, exit and and you just there's nothing that you can do to affect anybody else's decision making only your own so you might as well be prepared is that kind of where you're coming from yeah, pretty much. And just to touch on it before we before we uh, wrap this up here, I will say that it's got to be like a busted pallet of fertilizer has to be top five for things that you don't want to break in the back of your truck, right? I, I mean, is there even is it number one? Is that the worst thing that can explode in the back of your truck? Is just animal dump? Well, animal dump. Uh, after Monday, things could get worse. Because on Monday, I'm going in to the DMV to get my hazmat. Ah, okay. That's a v- very good so point. I feel like anything hazmat <laughs> would probably d- top that fertilizer. Yeah. But as far as smell, that's probably the worst. Okay. Well, listen, I've, I've taken up plenty of your time today, John. I, uh, I think that we can get out of here on this. I want to know, um, what, what would you tell other drivers if they were considering coming to H&M uh, from their company you know, you, you mentioned some nice things about how they, you know, they were honest with you and were truthful. Uh, why do you like working for H&M aside from being home on the weekends? Good communication. I mean, if I'm uh, going towards a customer and they're being dicks today because they don't want to stay open for the last, you know, 30 minutes it's going to take you to get there, your dispatcher with H&M will call you up or send you a message on your tablet, which you can see while you're driving. You just can't respond to it. When you get there, park and shut down. I mean, they are really good about letting you know what your day is going to consist of. And they're always a call away. And the other part I like about H&M is I had uh, someone not associated with the company called the advisor contact me and said, hey, uh, this is a service that H&M pays us to do, but we don't tell H&M. So if H&M is pissing you off and you want to cuss them out, Cuss them out to me, we won't tell H&M. Okay. So, you know, if I'm having a bad day and, you know, well, let's say you're my, uh, let's say you're my dispatcher, Marcus. Let's just say you're having a bad day, you, you get onto my case, so now my day is bad. I can just call them up and like, yeah, that Marcus dude, he's a total dick. <laughs> you know, I, I don't like working with him today because, you know, he's just, he's just being so mean. I didn't do anything to him. Well, they're not going to turn around and be like, hey, Marcus, guess what John said? That's good. Now they know that, you know, that's nice. People have bad days, and sometimes, you know, as us truck drivers, we have to deal with all the idiot four wheelers out on the road. Now we have to worry about idiot fellow 18 wheelers because, as uh, one of the people I went to school with said, some companies nowadays just take the idiots out of the four wheelers and give them the keys to an 18 wheeler. <laughs> Kind of sounds like how I got the keys to this podcast, John, to be honest with you. But, uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Lots of things that can make our day bad. Yeah, and and having somebody having a sounding board like that, like I can only I can only imagine how good Mike's job would be, my audio producer, if uh, if he had a phone line where he could call and and talk shit about me for a while. I'm thinking about setting one up and just having it be a recorded line so I can at least hear him out uh, when he's upset with me, you know, but. John, man, thank you so much. We've been we've been on here for quite a while now. I know you've got work to do. I can't tell you how much it means to me and and Mike and the podcast team uh, that you've taken time out of your day to uh, share your thoughts with us, talk about Volvos, and um, man, I'll, I'll definitely have you back on sometime in the future uh, if you if you'd have us. All right. I'm a truck driver. I love talking. <laughs> 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 awesome. Well, if you have any questions or anything like that, please feel free to reach out. Uh, we just had such a good time talking to you, man. Thank you so much. Be safe out there on the road, okay? Oh, uh, will do. Really appreciate John taking the time out of his busy day to come and talk to us and bringing us along there as he chats to a couple of his uh, former coworkers over the CB radio. Always love to hear that. Um, once again, if there's something that you want to hear, make sure you interact with us over on the H&M Trucking social media page. Now, uh, Volvo is a Swedish company, and uh, as, as I'm putting together the podcast here, I was thinking, what other things did Sweden invent, and am I okay with them? Because I've never driven a, a, a Volvo before, but I can tell you after talking to John and after all of the information I've received from other drivers... I can't say that I wouldn't jump in one first. I mean, they see that sleeper that John was talking about. You got a dinette. You're basically driving around a camp trailer without a dumper in it, which is fine with me because everybody knows if you're camping in a camper or a trailer or a motorhome, the only rule is you can't shit in it. And so you wouldn't be doing that in the cab of your truck either. It's fine. It sounds like a good setup back there. But let's go through some of the other Swedish inventions that you might have heard of and talk about my thoughts on them. Uh, because I'm the podcast host, and that's what I get to do. Spotify was a Swedish invention. Didn't know if you know that. I guess I'm okay with it, all right? Mainly because it helps us put the podcast out there. Uh, but I do have a problem with how many streams it takes musicians to make one cent off of their music. That part really does bug me. But hey, I, I mean, at this point in time, what are you going to do about it? If your music is out there, it's never going to die on the internet anyway. It's really hard to make money like that. Um, what can I say though? I'm a warrior for the starving artists, but in all honesty, anything that keeps me off of Napster and giving my computer aids to get the music that I want is something I'm okay with. So one half point for Sweden. Okay. Not a full point on that because I think you could pay the artists more, but I'll give you one half point mainly because you can find this podcast on it. Moving on, uh, and kind of sticking with the music vein here, ABBA. ABBA, the band, A-B-B-A, -B -B -A, ABBA. That's a Swedish band. Now, for serious, you guys, Dancing Queen is a good cut, okay? I, I, I'm not going to sit here behind a microphone and act all holier than thou and tell you that there's some meta reason that uh, the Dancing Queen doesn't hit for me. It's catchy. It's got good vibes. I, I listened to a couple tracks in preparation to make this argument, uh, though, and, and the first minute and a half of Fernando made me want to jump into traffic. I thought because Dancing Queen was good, I was like, oh, Fernando, that sounds like a cool guy. Let's click on that track to see. No, no, it's an accident from the word go. Um, I, I'm Look, if they're your thing, great, okay? But no points for the Swedes here. We're moving on to category three. Half a point for Sweden is the aggregate. Sorry to all you ABBA fans out there. Uh, this one's a big one. Ikea. Ikea is a big thing for you Swedes out there. I haven't been. I won't go. Uh, the way that I see it, cheap furniture and home goods with barely intelligible instructions can be found on Amazon from the comfort of my couch, which is very unmaze like And, you know, on the contrary, I could get up, put on goddamn pants, and drive my happy ass to Ikea, where I will immediately become sad. Um, I, I just... I don't get it. The whole keep you in the store, I hear that the arrows point to the wrong directions, and they just kind of they, it keeps you trapped in there like some sort of bad ripoff of labyrinth and i'm not all about it so no on ikea uh, i award sweden no points and may god have mercy on their soul um let's move on to swedish meatballs because this one you might be surprised here uh, if you or a family member has a good recipe for swedish meatballs i highly recommend you protect it with your life memorize it lock it up mix the key in with the meatballs and make it disappear forever 
Uh, Swedish meatballs slap, as the kids say. They are phenomenal. One point for Sweden, bringing the total to a dismal one and a half points so far. But we're moving. Let's see if we can build some momentum here, okay? Uh, Next up for Swedish inventions, the Nobel Peace Prize. Ah, Okay. All right. I I can vibe with this, as the kids say. God, I hate it when I sound like I'm 50. Uh, we are gaining a little bit of steam here. Uh, the Nobel Peace Prize, subjective as it may be, has been awarded to some real champions over the years. Uh, curiously absent from the lists is uh, Dolph Lundgren, who is Swedish himself, and he peacefully united the audience of Rocky IV against him. Uh, he was the hero we needed, just not the one we wanted until the end of that movie. One point, Sweden. Good job with the Nobel Peace Prize. I like what you're doing there. Fostering peace, always a good thing in my book. Um, okay, momentum, two and a half points for Sweden. Moving on to H&M Clothing. We're H&M Trucking. There's H&M Clothing over there across the aisle. Look, when it comes to naming things after things, you'd think this Swedish clothing company would have thought longer before naming themselves after the best damn trucking outfit on either side of Stockholm. Uh, but it isn't that tidbit that costs the Swedes here, okay? Unlike Ikea, I have been into an H&M Clothing store. I bought one pair of pants there and the crotch ripped out the very first time I tried to freestyle walk in a parking lot with them and if I'm not able to jump up on a curb and throw a fish brain like sorry but I need I need better pants and I'm banned from that Taco Bell now so all in all H&M clothing either up the quality of the threads get some Egyptian threads in there maybe they seem to do that really well but as far as the clothing store is concerned you ripped off the name. That's a no-go. The clothes basically ripped off my body when I was trying to perform. That's a no-go. No points for H&M clothing. And you're lucky I don't dock you that half point I gave you for Spotify just for trying to rip off our name. Um, the audio producer Mike is going to be happy with this one because I finally got to it. And I promised I would. But metal bands. Metal bands from Sweden understand uh, as as the kids say once again they understood the assignment all right in flames mashuga opeth amon amarth entombed nothing says metal like long hair and a buttload of snow in an eerie forest sweden has both in spades one point for rocking hard half a point just for i mean really patriotically trying to pull your country out of the ditch here uh, swedish metal Love you guys. I actually got to see In Flames and Meshuggah recently. I've never felt like more power come out of metal from those guys. They've got something's going on in Sweden that makes the stuff that they sing about a little bit dark. I haven't figured that part out yet, but I like it. Uh, It's great road rage music. Let's move on. I only got two more here just to to bring you up to speed. Three and a half points for Sweden right now. It, It ain't looking great. How about Swedish wedding tradition? We might call this in the great United States of America a felony, um, but the Swedes are the ones that came up with the whole kidnap the bride or groom the night before their wedding thing. Uh, Contrary to popular belief, bailing the wedding party out of the clink minutes before the ceremony has its consequences, and with a 50% divorce rate already staring most brides and grooms in the face, I think we can leave the felonious antics up to where the moose roam. Sorry, Swedes, no points for your wedding tradition. I mean, take a glass in a, in a decorative towel and smash it. I, do anything else but commit kidnapping felonies right before the wedding. I'm not all about it. No points once again. And finally, this one might be the biggest one. I mean, the Nobel Peace Prize is huge. Spotify, you know, pulls its weight. Let's be honest, this one won't be the biggest one. Metal bands won that, hands down. But Celsius temperature. This is a big deal. Lots of people use Celsius. Nobody that matters, but lots of people. I, at least I know that I can blame them for that one time I baked a cake at 180 degrees for 40 minutes and ended up with a sweet soupy mess because that was 180 Celsius, which is like 350 Fahrenheit or something like that. Is it so hard to conform to America in anything? I mean, if life was a movie, the metric system in Celsius would be played by the villain, Dolph Lundgren, and Sly Stallone, or Imperial and Fahrenheit in this movie, would knock all of his teeth down his extremely long throat. No points for Sweden for Celsius here. You didn't need it. We didn't need it. We didn't want it. We didn't ask for it. But here it is, much like the whole wedding tradition and the Ikea thing. So let's do a final tally here. Uh, Three and a half points for Sweden. The winner, again, as always, back-to-back World War Champs, America. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe. Please follow this. Share it with your friends. We're doing this every single week. Wednesdays, you can find it. It drops at 5 a.m. Central Time, which is like, I don't even know. It's like 2.30 or something on the West Coast where I live. It's like 8.50 p.m. out east where Mike's at. The point is, it's there on Wednesday. You can download it. We'll be sharing shorts. We'll be sharing videos. We'll be doing all sorts of fun stuff with this podcast. Interact with me over at the H&M Trucking social media pages. Thank you so much for listening. I've been your host, Marcus Bridges. Thanks to John Mayhew for joining us. Thanks to audio producer Mike for putting up with my terrible jokes. We'll see you next week. Stay fresh, cheese bags! Thank you for listening to the H&M Trucking Podcast. Please leave a review, subscribe, and connect with Marcus over at the H&M Trucking social media channels. And if you're considering a job at H&M, find us at hmtrucking.com. Until next time, stay safe and ahead of the curve drivers.